Good evening. Once again, we welcome you to uh, Tuesday evening study out of God's Word, another message of hope. Tonight is going to be a very interesting uh, topic that we're going to discuss. We're going to start this today, and because of the amount of, the amount of content in it, we will conclude it on next Tuesday evening. Next Tuesday evening. But our focus tonight is coming out of Isaiah chapter 59. And actually I'm going to uh, refer to verse chapters out of 59. The entire uh, book is what we're dealing with, of the 59th chapter of Isaiah. Let's begin by uh, uh, the thought we're going to deal with is truth is fallen in the street. Truth is fallen in the street. I'm going to say a lot about truth tonight and next week. In the first verse it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. And then in verse 8 says, The way of peace they have not known, and there is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. And then in verse 14 it says, Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street and iniquity shall, uh, cannot enter. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, so truth fails, yes. and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Uh, in the New King James Version, we'll read several translations, but for, but for clarity's sake tonight, it says, justice is turned back, and righteousness stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and iniquity cannot enter. The NIV version of the New International Version says, so justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. The English uh, Standard uh, Version of Translation says, justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off. But truth has stumbled in the public squares, and unrighteous uprighteousness cannot enter. The message translation says it this way: Justice is beaten down, righteousness is banned, banished to the sidelines. Yeah. Truth staggers down the street. Mm -hmm. Honesty is nowhere to be found. Yeah. I thought that instead of trying to come up with some sophisticated subject matter to discuss tonight. I thought maybe we just draw from the words of the text where it yeah. said truth is falling in the street. It's yeah. an ongoing problem. Truth is falling in the street. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a short overview of this chapter and then we'll take a deeper dive into it. Yes. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 59 shows us an able God who is willing and is eagerly reaching out to a nation. Yes. However, in Isaiah 59, something terrible is terribly amiss mm -hmm. because sin has created a gulf between them and God. Well. A separation that is necessarily because God is holy. Mm -hmm. Unless they confess their sins and return to him, he cannot restore them to himself. Yes. In verses 3 uh, to 8, or through 8, uh, it lists the sins that God exposed uh, in them. And how many of us know God will expose our sins? Mm -hmm. And to summarize them, we break it down this way. One, uh, speaking hurtful words among each other. Two, failure to correct wrongs and injustices in society. Mm -hmm. Third, hatred and bitterness among each other. Yes. And fifth, dishonesty and deception. Mm. 
And number five, pro reprobate thinking, conceiving evil thoughts mm -hmm. or evil ways, and their thought life wasn't pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. Those are very interesting way of uh, explaining or exposing what's going on in that day. Yes. And certainly what was happening in Isaiah's day is happening in our day. Verse 8, however, records the terrible results in man where he says, Therefore, there is no peace. Mm. Why is it that there's no peace? Because of what was going on uh, previously, what was said. Uh, hateful words, uh, failure to correct wrongs, injustice in society, hatred and bitterness among each other, dishonesty and deception, reprobate thinking, uh, conceiving, uh, uh, concocting evil ways. Yes. That's what drove uh, to a situation where there's no peace. But remarkably, in uh, sincere confessing their wicked deeds, the root cause come to light in the following verse, which is the purpose of this prophetic message. Mm -hmm. Not only is it prophetic in the day of Isaiah, is prophetic in the day in which we're living in this 21st century. Yes. Verse 14, where it states, and justice is turned away backward and righteousness stands afar off. Mm -hmm. But truth is fallen in the street mm -hmm. and unrighteousness cannot enter. Mm -hmm. Yes, truth is lacking. Mm -hmm. That's what it's saying. But the question that comes to mind is, can truth fail? Mm -hmm. Can truth fall in the streets of a city? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes, because the Bible also said it is so. Amen. Uh, but we're going to take a deeper dive into looking at that in the next uh, two weeks, tonight and next Sunday, next Tuesday, excuse me. Uh, let's take a deeper dive into this text as we deal with uh, truth has fallen or uh, truth is fallen in the street. Uh, the fifth and ninth chapter of Isaiah uh, to give you a biblical context or historical context reflects the condition of Israel after their return to Jerusalem from Babylonian exile in 538 B.C. Of course, we know that many exiles had grown uncomfortable in Babylon yes. and were unwilling to leave. The handful that did return faced a ravaging city, mm -hmm. amen, and, and a city that was marred in all kinds of temples yes. with no city walls and, and marauding bands of outlaws threatened them. With no central government, there was little leadership and little means of enforcing laws. Mm. In fact, there was no justice. Yes. With no temples, religious life was little more than a sham. Mm. Yes. Apathy, indifference, and cynicism grew until people began to lose sight of who they were as God's people. Yes. And they began to be careless about how they lived, mm. and they began to blame God and others for their dilemma and their sad condition. Mm. Sounds like today. I'm going to keep using that expression. It sounds like today. Yes. They complain that God's hand is short, mm. or weak, and that his ear is heavy, mm. that he cannot hear. That's what he says in that first verse. Mm. They were saying that God was no longer omnipotent mm. and that he could no longer hear their prayers. Mm. It reminds me of Adam in the book of Genesis trying to put the blame on God for his sin. Yes. We always have a tendency to try to shift the blame to others yes. for our sins. Mm -hmm. He first started off blaming Eve, his wife. He said, the woman you gave to me be with me she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I did eat. Well, but then he shifted and blamed God. Mm -hmm. He said, the woman you gave mm -hmm. to be with me. Mm -hmm. He blaming God. Unfortunately, Isaiah's words to Israel 
are appropriate to the church or for the church in America today. Well, I know we have a broad audience, but I want to bring this down to deal with some serious issues that we're facing mm -hmm. in this century in which we're living, in this season. The prophet wanted the people of Israel to be confronted with the truth. Yes. With truth, with truth. And remember the word truth. Yes. He told them that they were wrong to blame God. Mm -hmm. And yes, the nation was so corrupt, mm -hmm. it continued to blame God. Mm. What was happening? Yes, lies were rampant, mm. and truth had fallen in the street. Mm. Yes, the hands were defiled with blood. Mm. Yes, iniquity abound. Mercy. Yes, justice was absent in the land. Mm. But Isaiah says all that is true, but don't blame God. Yes. His hand is not shortened that it cannot save, mm -hmm. and his ears are not heavy that he cannot hear. Yes. What happened in Israel mm -hmm. in Isaiah's day is happening in America today. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm going to keep emphasizing what was happening in 538 B.C. Mm -hmm. is happening right now mm -hmm. in 2020, amen, in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. The conditions are similar. Mm. And rather than facing up to our responsibility, mm. they shift the blame to God, they shift the blame on others. Mercy. We're seeing the same shift today as we as, as we shift the blame to others. Mm. It's others that that have got us in this condition. That's a gentleman wrote a book that deals with the laws of theodynamics. In that book where he talks about, in the chapter, deal specifically with the laws of theodynamics, mm -hmm. in that chapter he specified that God is all-powerful. Yes. He's all-powerful all the time. Mm -hmm. He's all-powerful in every place. But he can choose not to demonstrate mm -hmm. or to use his power when we sin. Hold mm -hmm. on to that. Mm -hmm. Sin can prevent him from using his power in certain situations. Mm. Let me give you a biblical examination, uh, example. In Psalm 78, the writer is reminding Israel of God's goodness to them mm. in the wilderness. Yes. And in verse 40 through 41, it says, how often mm. do you provoke and vex the Lord in the wilderness Mercy. and grieve him in the desert? Mm. Mm. Yes. You turn back and tempted God mm. and limit the Holy One of Israel. Mm. So with that in mind, as background, there are several things I want to look at tonight uh, in this chapter, and we walk through this entire chapter of Isaiah 59. First of all, uh, we see God's character, God's yes. character, mm -hmm. God's character. It's good yes. in this season mm -hmm. in which we're living in to experience and to witness God's character. Yes. Look at verse 1 of our text. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, mm -hmm. and it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Yes. Mm -hmm. This verse tells us two things. First, it tells us that God's hand is omnipotent. Mm -hmm. And second, it tells us that his hearing is, under, is outstanding. First of all, I want us to remember that God's hand is omnipotent. That means God has all power. Yes. The people of Isaiah's day somehow thought that God had lost his ability to save or rescue. Mm -hmm. Save or rescue. Mm. The prophet answered with the resounding no. They had wandered so far mm. away from God, become so indifferent toward God, mm. that they had lost sight of the power of God. Mm. We are losing sight of Mercy. the power of God as if we are, we are not responsible for our actions. Mercy. Truth is falling in the streets. Mm. The word omnipotent is derived from a Latin refers to the fact that God's power is infinite mm -hmm. and unlimited. Yes. The word omnipotent is defined in, in the biblical word almighty which occurs 350, 45 times in the Bible. Yes. It is never used of anyone 
but God. We are not omnipotent. Yes. He alone is almighty. And it declares that in Psalm 89 verse 8, where it says, O God almighty, who is like you, almighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds us. Yes. God can do with power anything power can do because there's strength to do all he wills to do. Yes. He has the resources and the ability to work his will in every circumstances in the universe. Yes. A.W. Tozer, uh, the writer puts it, God possesses what no creature can, mm. an incomprehensible plenitude, plenitude of power and potency that is absolute. Mm. Yes. In other words, nothing is too big for God mm. to accomplish and nothing is too little for him to use and accomplish. The problem is not with God, right. it's with us yes. humans, amen. It's a great tragedy when we fail to hook up to the power of God yes. available to us. Mm -hmm. It is a double tragedy when we realize that all we need to do is to get this power is to surrender to Christ. Yes. But not only does this passage tell us that God's hand is omnipotent, but it tells us God's hearing is outstanding. It's yes. impeccable. Yes. His ear is not heavy, it's not dull, mm. that it cannot hear. And the reason for his refusal to hear, mm -hmm. amen, is, is us. Mm. Yes. Sin separates us from God. Yes. In Isaiah chapter 1, it states, the Lord says, even when you make many prayers, Mm -hmm. I will not hear. Did you hear that? Yes. He said, even when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Why? Because your hands are full of blood. Jesus. In Proverbs mm -hmm. 15, verse 29, the Bible says, the Lord is far from the wicked, Mercy. but he can't, but he, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Yes. And then in Psalm 66, verse 18, it says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, mm -hmm. The Lord will not hear me. So when our mm. prayers go unanswered, mm. we need to check up on our own hearts. Yes. Amen. The problem is not that God's ear is heavy or dull, mm. but our hearts are tarnished mm. with disobedience and sin. Mercy. Now, I know this is a difficult word to deal with because we don't talk about sin anymore from the pulpit. Mercy. We don't talk about it in Bible study. Mm. We don't confess our sins. We always talk about how good God is, but we never talk about how messed up we are. Well. We must deal with the sin nature. Mm -hmm. The second thing I want to deal with tonight, and I'm going to close this down after this, is that how we see what it is that causes God's heart to be broken. Yes. What is it? In verse 38, he said, we see a a midriff of sins that, that causes God heartache. Yes. Notice he says, your hands, he's talking your directly hands. to the people, yes. your hands are defiled mm -hmm. with blood, your fingers with iniquity. Mm -hmm. Then notice in verse 3, and this is where he's tightening the whole concept, your lips, your lips. Mm -hmm. have spoken lies, mm -hmm. and your tongue has, has muttered perversity. Yes. We're living in a dark age mm -hmm. in America Mercy. where lies and lies and more lies seem to be taking hope. Mm -hmm. America has become a land of pathological liars, Mercy. perjured uh, testimonies, political cover-ups, mm -hmm. doctored resumes, mm -hmm. falsified research, Mercy. and calculated misinformation Mercy. because of lies. We're being lied to by what we're told, and our children are being lied to by what they are not told. Well, I'm going to say that again because this message is a serious message. It, it causes pain in my spirit yeah. when I see what's going on on a daily basis. Yes. We are being lied to by what we're told, yes. and our children are being lied to by what they are not told. Perfect. Consequently, our children will grow up not knowing what the truth is. Mercy. They will grow up, amen, thinking that 
that a lie is the truth. And that it's better to lie than to tell the truth. Mm. What else can you expect <clears throat> when the man in the strongest office in the nation well. has repeated over the last three and a half years more than 19,000 lies? Mm. The Bible is true. Amen. About Amen. Why peace mm. have left us. Mm. We're living in an age of, of lies where truth is no longer, amen, important to so many. But it is important to God. Yes. I can't help but pause for a moment yes. and think about why uh, young people all over this land have been marching, marching now for days and days and days. Amen. It would no no stoppage in view because they want to change yes. from the spirit of line in this nation. Yes. They want laws that make life better for for all humankind. Yes. They want things changed. They want people to be, everybody to be recognized, amen, under the same thing. For we have the same rights, yes. but we are being lied to Mercy. and destroyed on every side. Mm. Today in Kentucky is a primary uh, election. Yes. But the tragedy of it is that, that because of uh, the Supreme Court gutting the Voters' Rights Act in, in a few years ago, amen, set in course a whole uh, problem when it took out uh, Section 4 of that, of that Bill of Rights that, that made it uh, for people to have the right to vote. Since that time, states on top of states has become involved in voter suppression. And in, in Kentucky is one of them. When you, when you do away with so many polls where, where there's one poll to vote today for 611,000 people Mercy. is an unjust situation. Mm -hmm. In a nation mm. where the president says that, that voter uh, by mail is fraudulent, but yet he votes by mail. Mercy. His family votes by mail. Mercy. The vice president and his family votes by mail. The attorney general votes by mail. The press secretary votes by mail. Hypocrisy and lying in this nation. And and guess what? The vice president registered his official residence in the governor's mansion in uh, uh, Indianapolis. Amen. Mm -hmm. In Indiana. How much hypocrisy can we be? Amen. We're living in a nation of lies. Yeah, you might as well say amen. amen. In verse 4, Isaiah says, No one calls for justice, mm. nor does any plead for the truth. I'm calling for justice, mm -hmm. and I'm pleading for truth. They trust in empty words, speak lies, they conceive yeah. evil, mm. and bring forth iniquity. Mercy. Isaiah defines two problems here. First, people were bringing unjust lawsuits against others. Mm. Secondly, unjust decisions were made when the lawsuits were dealt dwelt within the court system. In other words, the wicked were manipulating the legal system to achieve the unjust results. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar? Right. Amen, it should. Look at verse five. And verse five really tightens the whole situation. They hatch, listen to it. They hatch the eggs of viper's eggs and spin a spider web. Whoever eats their eggs will die. Mercy. And one is broken, an adder is hatched. An adder is a viper, or in just straight language, a snake. Mercy. Eggs are a source of life. Mm -hmm. They're good to eat and contain within the shell the promise of more life. But not these eggs. Mercy. They are the object within the shell are baby snakes, mm -hmm. and their poison is as lethal as full-grown snakes and will kill a person. Mm -hmm. So it is, catch this, so it is mm -hmm. with a society rooted in iniquity. Mm -hmm. It promised much but gives little. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. That's why I'm raising up this, this trumpet tonight. Mm -hmm. Instead of promoting life, Mercy. It destroys life. Yes. Instead of offering quiet substance, it advertises glittering emptiness. Mercy. That's why folk are marching. Mm. 
the, 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 the pagan philosophies of, of Isaiah's day are the same hatched eggs. Mm. We are being fed every day. Mercy. And they are hatched in hell's incubators. Jesus. We are being fed a daily snake diet mm. of snake eggs, of humanism, materialism, militarism, mm. relativism, amen, and all kind of other isms. Mm. And they're all wrapped up in the devilish deception. And Satan himself yeah. is the granddaddy of all of them. Mercy. But look at verse 6, and I'm getting ready to close tonight, that cobs webs are useless. Notice that. Mm. Are useless for clothing. Mm. that cannot cover themselves with what they make. The deeds are evil deeds, mm -hmm. and the acts of violence are in their hands. Mm. People can see through cobwebs, yes. which despite mm. all their fancy weaving, well. make them inappropriate for clothing. People can see through lies. Yes. Amen. Truth will prevail. I remember growing up in the country, not far from here in Fort Hill County, Virginia, as a boy, working on the farm and playing in the old uh, bones, you would often see spider webs. And spider webs grow when there's inactivity going yes. on. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So spider webs are growing in our spirits and our minds because of inactivity of God's righteousness. Yes. You do remember Adam and Eve sowed fig leaves together and hid in the bushes yeah. to hide their nakedness from God but it didn't work. We play this game of hiding in the shadows, Mercy. believing we're covered with beautiful clothes, when in reality we are sinners, naked and exposed before a holy God. Mm -hmm. And I, could, I submit tonight that God is pulling the cover yes. over so much of this political demonic powers today. Yes. God looks down deep beneath the surface and sees what's in the heart. What is the result of all these snake eggs mm. and spider webs? Mm. Amen. Verses uh, 12 through 14. There's a traffic jam in the streets. Mm. Justice and equity can't get through the streets anymore Mercy. because truth has fallen in the streets. Mm. What has caused truth to fall? Truth has been knocked down. Mm by false beliefs and mm. lies and, mm. and manipulation and misrepresentation mm. and hypocrisy. Truth has been knocking down, down by so many doctors of philosophy, Very amen, good. quoting their own stuff, amen, mm. tripped up by dishonest politicians, yes, I said it, tripped up by dishonest politicians, mm. and, and above all, what's making a problem worse Truth is chloroformed by hustling preachers, yes. peddling poison from the pulpits, yes. instead of dealing with the issues of behind. I come to let us know truth is falling in the streets. Yes. But it raises an important question. Is there any way out of it? What can we do? Does God see all of this? Is God able to solve it? I'll answer that for you on next Tuesday evening. God bless you. Tonight, I thank God for what he's done, what he's yet doing. And I lift up some very pertinent, uh, awesome issues tonight. Mm -hmm. But I want us to, it may, prick, it may be pricking, it may be hurtful, or painful, but I want us to pause long enough and, and to make some parallels between uh, Isaiah's day and our day uh -huh. because we're facing the same situation. Mm -hmm. I want to take this opportunity to invite those of us who, who follow us, who support us in, in Culpeper or in Virginia, Rappahannock County, uh, or Fort Kia, where I grew up, uh, to meet us on Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. Sunday evening, uh, June the 28th, 6 o'clock, uh, in uh, where there's going to be a community gathering for peace and justice. Mm -hmm. Peace and justice. There'll be an ecumenical group of people. Uh, from the uh, religious realm and also community leaders. And I've been asked to be the final speaker. Meet us there. Be held on Eldon Phones, E L D O N Phones, on 4432 Spurville Pike, Woodville, Virginia. That's on 522, going out of uh, 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 Spurville 
towards uh, Woodville on the left hand side. They're asking you to bring your lawn chairs, bring your uh, face masks, bring blankets because it's going to be observed in a way where no one will be in harm's way. But meet us there. Also, we want to hear from you. Write us, amen, at CAB for souls at AOL.com. Truth, truth, truth is falling in the streets. I want to ask you one more thing. And I've been praying over this. I have not asked for anything since I've been coming on this platform. But I'm asking those of you who can plant a seed of faith of $25 in this ministry. We're receiving so many calls, so many requests from around the world to come help us. I am a missionary. This organization is a missionary organization. CAV Outreach International Ministries. And we're gonna be going soon to the mission field. And we want you to plant a seed of faith only if you can. And God will bless you. But those who may be touched on another ground, this would be our 97th international mission trip. And if God so touch you, plant a seed of $97. You'll see the buttons, amen, on our flyers that go out. It's on our website. God bless you. And we pray, Lord, we thank you. And we pray this word will find a larger place in somebody's heart. Move on us that we can lift up truth above anything else. Because truth will prevail. Keep us in your power. Keep us as we go forth. Help us to be an instrument to others. And above all, Lord, protect our children and teach them the importance of truth. Truth is falling in the street, but God will lift up truth, and truth wins every time. God bless you. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday at 11 o'clock, East Coast time, uh, Standard Time uh, in the USA. And they will conclude this message. Truth is falling in the streets on next Tuesday night at 7.30. God bless you.